Hi everybody, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're all well. Um, in this session, I thought we'll talk about the term of a mortgage, okay? Um, what should people be thinking about getting a mortgage over? So, you know, is it going to be 10 year term, 15 year term, 20, 25? We're seeing a lot more first time buyers opt for 30 and 35 year mortgage terms. Um, and looking into what that really means for yourselves and, and the sort of things you need to think about when you're looking at a mortgage term. So, um, generally what I would say historically, and everybody's different, but the norm tends to be around a 25 year term people are requesting, if they can do it. What I mean by that is, you know, generally mortgage terms tend to go up to the age of retirement, um, 65, 67, but most lenders will accept a term up to the age of 70. What I mean by that is they don't want additional pension requirements and additional affordability checks beyond that age. So 70 tends to be the cutoff point. However, there are a few lenders, um, Santander being one, that will work onto the age of 75. There's one or two other lenders that will go to the age of 80. So if you can work till the age of 80 um, and you're not working into retirement, uh, for example, you know, you, you can't be a bricklayer and say, I'm gonna work until the age of 75. But you know, if you're a little bit older and you're looking for your second or third mortgage or third property, um, and maybe you're in your 50s and you wanna buy a property, you know, you, you may want to stretch out the term a little bit more. So there are options beyond the age of 75 without taking into account pension contributions and so forth. Uh, a lot of the lenders would want you just to have a pension you know you be paying into a pension but they're not going to stress test that but when you're a little bit younger um, you tend not to think about it so much so this video is really around thinking about the term of you know 10 15 20 50 you know 30 years um, and I would say you've got to the first thing you need to really look at is is it affordable okay and um, what you should be trying to do is make it affordable and make it comfortable for yourself and there are different strategies you can look at so you could go for a 25 year term <clears throat> but the majority of the mortgages in the UK on a residential purposes they've got a 10% overpayment facility whereby you can pay um, down 10% of the mortgage, although you're on a repayment mortgage, you can pay up to 10% of the mortgage without paying any early repayment charge. So what you could choose to do is reduce the term of your mortgage. So you might have started out with 25 years, but because you've overpaid every month or you've made lump sum payments every year, that as reduced, you could reduce the mortgage term or you could reduce the mortgage balance. So People can be flexible with this stuff, okay? And your aim should be, um, and I don't care what you read about some of the stuff I've seen on YouTube about not paying off your mortgage. If it's your residential mortgage, guys, you should be paying them. Whoever is saying do not pay your mortgage because you can do this with your money, you could do that with your money, you could put your money in a fund, you can buy investment properties and get that paid off. That's all great, but that's great if the interest rates are low, okay? Now, most of those people are not old enough to or they don't have as many gray hairs as me to tell you that interest rates are you know this is this is unusual okay what happens when interest rates go to five and six percent you should have really paid down your mortgage the big mortgage balance the bit that if you you know not pay you will get repossessed they will take your house off you you should really have looked after that so what i would say is while interest rates are low, while you're on a fixed rate mortgage, while you can make the commitment and you're young enough to do so, pay it down, okay? And that's what I think. Yeah, sure, go and get a buy to let if you can afford it, but your priority should be to keep a roof over your own, own head before you put a roof over a tenant's head, okay? And if you can do both, great, and many people do. Many people have got their own residential properties and buy a buy to let. What I don't agree with, and you can have an interest only, I've got an interest only buy to let mortgage, no problem around that. But when people are saying, don't pay your mortgage and go and invest it in this and invest it in that, um, that's all great. That's just thinking about the good times. What happens, and this video is really around what happens if you don't do the right things, okay? Now, Let's talk about a 25 year mortgage. Let's talk about a 35 year mortgage. Often I, got, I get a lot more people now to make affordability fit because they're young, because properties are expensive, because mortgages are expensive. They're asking for a longer term. What a longer term means is short term throughout your period of your mortgage, 
you might be paying less on a monthly basis because it's stretched out over a longer term. However, in the long term, you're paying more because you're paying interest for longer. Okay, so, um, and I, I understand, you know, some people will have to have that uh, because they want the flexibility of having uh, a short term, you know, when you buy a house, you might have to do some decorating, you might have to buy furniture, you might have to do the boiler, and you may want to keep your payments low short term. But your goal, your ultimate goal should be how are you going to pay this mortgage down? How are you going to make this faster for yourself pay less interest to the bank don't make the banks rich make yourself rich the only way you can make yourself rich is by reducing your commitment long term okay and reducing it by paying it down so that's fine so we've talked about that 10 percent facilities you can reduce the term you can you know you can play around with things and just because you know you started off on a 30-year mortgage it doesn't mean in two years time or in five years time you can't remortgage and play around and tweak with that term so yeah okay you've bought this house you want to stretch it out to 30 years from now. In two years' time, when your remortgage comes up, why don't you reduce that down? Why don't you bring it down to 20 years? If you can do so, if it's affordable, run your figures. Get your mortgage broker to run some figures for you. Have a discussion with them. You may have paid all your finances off for the sofas and stuff, and now you might have an extra 200, 300 pounds. You might want to do that as a commitment, or like I said, use the 10% over facility, overpayment facility, because you're not then tied in. You don't have to make the commitment if you haven't got it. If there's a holiday you want to go on, you're in control because you can control that 10% element. Now, what I do personally is, listen, I don't, you know, if the money's in my account, I'll spend it. So what I've done to myself is I've said, like, okay, what is the 10% facility every year? So what is my mortgage balance every year? What is my 10% every year? Let me cover that on a monthly basis. Let me increase my direct debits by whatever it is. So I, I do it on a monthly basis. Rather than putting a lump sum in, I said, okay, well, every month I want to pay, I don't know, £250 extra a month on my mortgage. And I do it on a direct debit. So automatically it goes out of my account. So I'm not having to think to overpay it. Okay. So that's a nice way of keeping, uh, keeping things going. But Let's talk about the term and what does that mean? So someone comes to me and says, Payam, I want a mortgage term for 35 years, please. Let's really think about that. Let's think about what's happened in the last 35 years and what's going to happen in the next 35 years. Say you're in your 30s now, you want to buy a property. So what you're saying is, look, I want to be committed to a mortgage. If things, if I don't do the overpayments, if I don't do all the stuff that I've discussed, I want to be committed to paying a mortgage for the next 35 years. Yes, you buy and sell a house. Yes, I might change things, but that's what I'm saying. Okay. What's happened in the last 35 years? Look at the cars we were driving 35 years ago. Look at the way we were communicating with one another 35 years ago. Look at the technology that we had 35 years ago. Look at the type of jobs that we had 35 years ago. And look at what's going to change. Okay, Right now, um, a lot of the industries that we've got are not going to be around in 35 years. The jobs that you're in, you're not going to be in in 35 years. It wouldn't be there. I'll give you an example. I used, when I was a student, I used to work for Blockbuster Video. It was the biggest thing. So on a Friday, everybody used to come I used to know the whole area because everybody used to bring their dates to the blockbuster video and um, they used to take out a video and it, I think it was the second biggest uh, entertainment industry entertainment company after Disney at one point so it was huge what's happened to blockbuster video gone what's happened to all of these businesses are gone so what I'm trying to think of you know try to portray here is guys the job that you're in you might be a driver, you might be an admin, you might be a mortgage broker. Talk about mortgage brokers, okay? Right now, yes, you can go online and do it, but because of the way the advice process works uh, and the way the industry is set up, um, you know, it's still pretty difficult to go and do a mortgage holistically um, without getting some sort of advice. You, I know you can do it direct with lenders, but I would say 75, 85% of most of the business that's being written on, on purchases and stuff like that is going via mortgage brokers. That's not, that's gonna change. That will change, because right now, technology is taking over, there's gonna be more and more sourcing engines, and people like me are gonna be out of jobs, okay? That's my own industry, okay? Let's talk about, I don't know, pharmaceuticals, going to a pharmacy, okay? You don't think, at the moment, I went to a pharmacy show, uh, because my wife is a pharmacist 
Uh, I went to a pharmacy show not long ago, and they've got robots now doing the dispensing and doing stuff. So electronic comes in, electronic uh, prescription comes in from the doctors, and you know the prescription is handled by a robot. So what's that, what's that going to do if you are a dispenser in a pharmacy or you're a pharmacist? What's that going to do if you're a doctor? Because there will be apps and there will be virtual reality apps. There will be all sorts of um, um, doctors and, 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 and prescription apps and online doctors and um, chatbots and AI-driven things. What's going to happen if you're in the medical sector? What's going to happen if you're in the um, logistics sector? What's going to happen if you're a driver? What's going to happen if you're a delivery person? All of those things. What's going to happen if you're in administration? You don't think AI is taking over administration. It's doing huge things in administration. So those are the industries that are going to change. So you've got to take a look at, not, not right now. Yeah, I can afford the mortgage now. Great, you can afford it. You and your missus can afford it now. But when you're hitting yourself for 25 years, you're committing yourself for that mortgage. You're signing there to say, I can afford this. We don't know what's going to happen in a year's time, let alone 25 years' time. So the moral of the story is, I'm not saying don't get a mortgage, don't go for it 25 years, but just don't stretch yourself and have a backup plan. So what I mean by that is try to pay down the mortgage as soon as possible. Try to look at various options, but maybe a product that doesn't have an early repayment charge. Maybe you've got to have inheritance coming in. How do you deal with that? But your goal should be to pay down this mortgage, this great big commitment that you've signed yourself to, that you've got someone like me helping you with. However, you've signed, you know, I'm not going to pay your mortgage if you can't, okay? And the bank's not going to pay your mortgage if they can't. They're going to try to repossess you, okay? So... What you want to do is you want to put yourself in the best possible position. And the best possible position is you fix the roof while it's sunny. Okay? While it's sunny, you fix the roof, not in the middle of a storm. Okay? And there will always be a storm. You know, in the next 10, 15, 20 years, you may lose your job. You may get sick. There may be problems. Um, you may, you know, lose somebody near you. You may have to, you know, there may be a problem with the property. Property prices may crash. Interest rates might go up. So what you want to do is you want to put a plan, just like you're making a plan to buy a car, just because you make a plan for your children, you make a plan for schooling, you make a child, you want to make a plan for this great big commitment that you're signing yourself into. Um, and do not get repossessed. So that's the moral of the story. It's a little bit... I suppose I'm not talking about specific uh, uh, specific mortgages here. This is about the mentality of signing yourself to any long-term credit credit commitment. Okay, and do not listen to the videos that you'll see about don't pay your mortgage off and do this with your money and do that with your money and do this with your money. Look at the people. Look at the people that are giving you that advice or, or giving you that watching. You know, you're watching that video. Look at them and say right. How long have they been around? How have they been doing this? Okay, Has that strategy made them a lot of money? Yes, maybe in the last two years, five years, six years. But what are they going to do? What's that strategy going to do in 10 years' time or 15 years' time? Fix the roof over your head first before you start looking at investment properties and getting into this. Do it, by all means. Most of my 50%, 60% of the business that I write is investment, is buy to let. It's people doing, you know, buying things. But what the key should be is, you look after the residential mortgage part first, and then you look at, you know, by all means, go interest only, do weird and wonderful things when it's to do with investments, okay? Not the property that you're going to be living in. Um, anyway, I'll catch you guys later. Hope you found this useful. If you have, if you know someone who's going for a mortgage, share this video with them, okay? And, and, and obviously like and subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I might be wrong. You might say, actually, you're talking nonsense, Priam. I'm on the other camp. I'm on the other camp of buying a few buy to lets and having that strategy pay for my residential lifestyle. Take care. All the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.